Signore e signori, buonasera. Sera. Are you ready to dance? Siete pronti a ballare? Because even if you're not ready, you're going to be ready by the time the rhythm gets into your veins and in your blood. And uh, welcome back, welcome. Bentornati alla Casa Italiana e bentornati i giullari di piazza, uh, Alessandra Belloni e John La Barbera, the directors, are here with us. And I just want to say one thing about the incredible work they've done throughout the ages. They remain for a long time the only uh, group that uh, put together serious scholarship and research with great performative ability. And they've been consistent in their work. And we, as people that promote Italian culture here, are very grateful for the uh, work they've done throughout the years. Please give them an applause just for that. <laughs> and as you know, as you know, uh, almost every year, Alessandra brings us a group of dancers, singers. She gives us sort of an update on her researches that are anthropological, sociological, inside the idea of myth and religion. And we are part of the research that she is constantly carrying out uh, in her field of interest. And uh, following her on Facebook, I was somehow on her trip this past summer to Campania, the region of Naples, where with a group of her students, she went at the discovery of things. And even if you would think, being the author of a book dedicated to La Madonna Nera, that she already knows everything, she discovered new things. And the great gift that Alessandra has is that the passion that she has about her research field shows. She gets you involved, she gets you interested. And I'm not gonna say anything else, you're here to listen to the music, to the healing music, the drums, and as always, the, there is gonna be performance, there is gonna be dance, there is gonna be music, and there is gonna be also something to nourish your knowledge, to make sure that when you leave here, you know something more about these fundamental founding myths of our civilization. So without further ado, I'm asking you to please welcome John La Barbera and Alessandra Belloni, that in turn will introduce the other artist, Alessandra. Grazie, grazie Stefano e grazie Costia. This is our home, Casa Italiana, la nostra casa. I always like to say this, that this is where we started from. Back in 1980, John La Barbera and I decided to start the group called I Giulari di Piazza that for some miracle of La Madonna Nera still exists, and, which has been a long time ago. And uh, NYU opened the doors to us. The, ca uh, the Casa Italiana didn't exist. It was the Italian department with Professor Luigi Ballerini. And then they built this beautiful place. We were the first concert in here. And it's a pleasure to work with Stefano and Costia, Professor Albertini. They have great programs here, so I'm honored to be back in the Casa, Casa Italiana. And the truth is that the program we're doing tonight is an idea that actually came out of them and Costia when I decided to start this program last summer to take students with me to Campania, like I've done before, but do something new. Workshop on the drumming, the chanting, and the dance with my colleague, Nando Citarella, who is there on Zoom in Rome. He couldn't come here. And, and then take the people to experience the places uh, after they learned some things from us. Then Costia said, this is really interesting for us too. And then here they are, some of the people who follow me to Italy, maybe at the end you can express how your experience was. But I know we had a great time. And, and Costia launched this idea, film it, Alessandra. We're gonna be interested in seeing how the film is and how the experience is because again, as uh, Alberti, Professor Albertini said, there's no one else doing this work in the United States. So we do it with love and passion. And I think we've come a long way, right, John? <laughs> it's been a long, a long journey. So I'm very happy to be here with uh, my colleague, partner, music director, old friend, John La Barbera, who's playing 
one of his magic guitars and mandolin, and then he'll speak a little bit about the music. And he's been with me for, for uh, what, 42 years? Steve Garn, who has not played here with us before, on saxophone, clarinet, and bansuri flutes. And our dancers, Peter De Geronimo, Francesca Silvano, who are going to show you some of the Tamoriata. So be, before we're going to speak more and introduce Nando and show our video from last summer, we'd like to welcome you with the chant to the sun, Yesh Sole, which is a, an ancient healing chant from Campania with the Neapolitan scale, the Lydian mode, done to heal, to bring good energy. And that's the wish to everyone here tonight. Yesh Sole.
year. So the journey this summer was very interesting. It was very hot. We went to some of the hottest places that were in the map, in the map of Italy, but we did it. So we started from Castellammare di Stabia, where uh, uh, near Torre Annunziata, and tonight I have a surprise for you. There is a, a very important um, study, um, archaeologist and Egyptologist from Torre Annunziata here tonight, Dr. Armando May, happens to be here and is going to speak a little later about something that is going to maybe surprise some people, that has to connect the Egypt with the region of Naples. So as we were doing this uh, uh, pilgrimage, we started from the Castellammare and we went to Positano, uh, we went to Torre Annunziata, we went to a place called Moiano, to Monte Vergine. I'll explain that much more as we go on. And the, the first time that I did this with my friend and colleague, Nando Citarella, we can put him on Zoom now. I have known Nando since 1980. I can't believe he's there ciao, <laughs> in ciao. Rome. And we're here. He has yeah. performed with us many times in New York, and the last time was, I think, 2010 at Symphony Space. Ciao, Nando. Ciao, ciao, <laughs> ciao to everybody. Come Nando back. is an expert of the music from the region of Campania. He, he sings and plays everything. But we met on a beach in Calabria, in a very ugly place, right, John? That was not the best place we've ever been to. Torretta di Grugoli. <laughs> and we were only there to catch this guy, because somebody told me that he played the tambourine, and this is the truth. I went, I saw him on the beach, and I said, scusa, scusa, ma tu suoni il tamburello? Io voglio studiare con te, è vero? Yes, <laughs> proprio così, proprio così, sulla spiaggia. E lui mi ha detto, brigadiere, we made a lot of jokes da about that, yes. Da gennarino a mare. Yeah. So that was the beginning for me to learn the tambourine and the tamora that I teach. I started with Nando. And it's so beautiful that we work together. And this summer was our first workshop together, both teaching what we know and he's from the roots, from that area. So before Nando speaks, and I'll tell you more stories about the Madonnas, the Seven Sisters, we're going to do a chant that is going to go a little bit back and forth. And with Zoom, we try that it should work. In the Neapolitan legend, there are seven Madonnas, there are seven sisters. And it's believed that the ugliest went away to hide on a high mountain called Monte Vergine. And when people really had to search for her, they had to work really hard and go up this mountain, they found that she was black and she was the most beautiful of all. And they called her Mamma Schiavona. Uh, the serving mother, and we, we will speak more about that, and you also see her on the video. But there are many chants for this Madonna, for the Sette Sorelle, giusto Nando? Sette sister, Sette Sorelle, come le Sette Sibille, le come sette le Sette Porte, le Sette Meraviglie. Le Pleiadi e tante altre, c'è un grosso simbolismo con le Sette. So this is just one of the chants, it's called Canto a Figliola. And we're going to chant it together, back and forth. And then I'm going to ask Nando to speak, because I'm sure you want to hear what he has to say about his tradition. He was born in it, and it's very powerful, the devotion that he has for Le Sette Sorelle. Canta Fiori.
cry with Nando, he knows that. <laughs> Sempre. Sempre, quando ci incontriamo e quando ci salutiamo. As we meet and as Sempre. we say goodbye. This, I think you will feel it, that this music touches something so profound, so ancient, so archaic, and it goes back to pre-Christian times, and this is how people still sing today to the Madonna. That's why I do this work and bring people with me. It's not something of the past, it's not something in a museum, it's alive today and stronger and stronger. And Nando represents that, one of the most important people in Italy and in Europe that brings the tradition to the world, through operas, to dance, through music. So, can, you want to speak English, Italian, like you would like to explain un po'. I think people would like to know where you're from and how you learned and these things. I speak a Napolitan, so you can understand it. C'è uno che ti capisce bene, che conosce tutti a Napoli, che conosce i detti musicisti. Uh, Marcello Assante, è un grande, anche è, lui. È sempre, è sempre molto emozionante ritrovarsi davanti a qualcuno cui invocare, cui pregare, cui chiedere, e anche se poi non ottieni. Però ci vai con, 
un animo particolare, ci vai con una predisposizione particolare e ti mette, eh, come, come diceva mio nonno, quiete, ti dà questa, questo senso quiete. di eh, yeah. libertà, di libertà. E poi c'è una cosa molto molto bella, l'espressione e il canto, e l'altra espressione che poi si fonde con il canto è il ballo. È Would tutto nel nome di questo, del tamburo. Everybody Ed understands? È... No. <ride> Lo devo dire in inglese. Ehi, ehi, ehi. Ok, translate. E buonasera. <ride> in a few words, uh, he said what's really important is the expression and the feeling and the bits behind it, this devotion, which is expressed through music, through singing, to drumming and through dance. And you'll see that in the video. So it's not the sitting in the church uh, and just looking at a painting, but it's really the emotion that comes from doing it, from experiencing it with your body, right? Con il corpo si, si sperimenta la devozione nella, nella tua zona. It's not just something that no. it's meditation. Esatto. It's doing it. You're doing it. With the body and eh. the mind and the soul. Vuoi parlare ancora in inglese? Ci puoi bravo l'inglese tuo? Che eh. dici? When you, when, when, you tr when you start to, uh, to think Uh, to the feast, uh, to go to the feast, you become, um, you know, it's, it's like a, a parallel. It's like in another way, it's like in another life. And you, uh, and you walk uh, very, very up, you stay, uh, walking and thinking and singing and drumming. So you prepare your uh, soul, your spirit to go Uh, one, two, three, but maybe three weeks before. Mm. Wait, waiting to the feast. And when you stay there, you uh, come in another world. It's trends. Please, It really is come to Italy, come to in the, in the south, come to some feast. Because uh, one thing and speaking, another thing is living. Yeah. E vorrei, puoi spiegare da dove vieni, da dove, dove sei nato e come io, hai imparato con la tua famiglia? Ask him, where is you vengo, born and how you vengo dal, eh, Io vengo dall'agro nocerino, I come from Nocera Inferiore, uh, it's the really country of the uh, kingdom of tomato. Uh, the tomatoes they eat? They, were, <laughs> yes. they was calling the kingdom of the um, red gold, il, il regno dell'oro rosso. Ah, the kingdom of the red gold. I didn't know that. See? Sì, che poi è, it's, it's strange because red and gold, but uh, l'oro rosso, it means il pomodoro, tomato. When the, in all in the area around Nocera, Scafati, San Marzano, Angri, uh, until Pompei, uh, they, they have a, a really big, big... Uh, uh, coltivazioni of tomato and uh, my family was uh, peasant they was uh, uh, in the in one part peasant in another part uh, uh, bakeries from the bakeries and and with my grandmother and the sister of my grandmother we was when we was young very very children uh, we was preparing the feast and the sister of my grandmother she was always playing the drum uh, to prepare all the women before the feast così è cominciato when i was six years young bellissimo so can you show us some of this chant and drumming because i know it's past midnight where you live Luce, I, Passata mezzanotte lui ha avvisato tutti i vicini che facevano poco il bordello, non si dice nada. <laughs> <laughs> che quando glielo ho chiesto, ho detto, oddio, a mezzanotte, come facciamo? So, um, yeah, prima che è troppo tardi, facci questa cantata e questa suonata sì. bellissima di Tambù. Ehi. Hey.
devi spiegare un poco di che cosa parla quando canti? Tu non hai just a couple of words about what the chant is about? È, è un po' difficile in inglese, lo dico in italiano, perché in italiano il, senso, il senso del canto parte con una devozione e poi passa subito a un canto d'amore. So un canto d'amore che diventa anche un canto a dispetto, perché qui ho cantato da solo, ma normalmente i cantatori sono due. Normally it's two people Uno chiama and e l'altro risponde. And the sec- so then it goes into the love part. It's very erotic. Lui capisce il napoletano, ha capito le tu hai capito le diceva. <laughs> yeah, it's usually from sì. devotion to eroticism. No, erotico, sono sempre canti erotici. Di solito. Sì, quasi sempre. Quasi, quasi sempre. sempre. In questo caso si parla di una tabacchera <laughs> che non è il tobacco, se non è cosa e che È vero. È vero. Lei lei Yeah. Sì, è vero. Come in Brasile, yeah. ha detto. Ma yeah. specialmente in Bahia, perché tutti i cani vengono dall'Africa. E secondo te c'è questa influenza africana, no? In quello che della Tamoria. Beh, l'Africa è la nostra madre, è stata per tutto. Sì. So, mm, noi, noi siamo un prolungamento dell'Africa e tutto nasce da lì. E poi be. sì si sparge fino alle altre parti del mondo perché poi eh, i conquistadores portarono gli schiavi dall'Africa in Europa e cambiarono tante, tante cose ma si diffusero anche tantissimi ritmi diversi so ma, a lot of these are ma, as well. um, molti dei nostri ritmi arrivano dall'Africa sono Africa e il canto, se vuoi dire qualcosa sul stile di singing vuoi dire qualcosa che, che sembra un po' arabo un po'... Lo, st- sì, lo stile è quello che eh, viene detto proprio eh, nella scala napoletana, la, la cadenza, è un, po', è un po' come la musica antica, è modale, non è temperata come da Bach in poi. Prima ogni cantante e ogni strumentista si accordavano a seconda della canzone che dovevano cantare e a seconda del timbro, ecco perché nel Medioevo le accordature erano diverse, poi yeah, so Bach ha inventato il sistema temperato e ha dato un ordine, eh, un concetto un po' più matematico, ma nella musica tradizionale il modo, e cioè lo stile, prende sempre anche dai popoli che hanno attraversato il paese. So John, e da noi in, ex- in Campania ci sono stati tanti popoli. You're going to explain it a little later in English about this. It's called the Neapolitan scale. Yeah. It's a mode and it's not Western. And you will hear it about now in what we're going to do next and in what we're going to show in the video. E adesso ce ne andiamo a Montevergine. Sei pronto? Andiamo a Montevergine. Andiamo. Prontissimi. 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 <laughs> so. Peccato che non sei qua. But next time. So this is the chant to the Madonna of Montevergine, the one that I was explaining, la, la settima sorella, the one that was believed to be ugly, but she was the most beautiful and black, and they call her Mamma Schiavona. This ancient sacred site where I, we met this summer was an ancient temple of the godless Cibele, the Earth Mother, and women and men played the drums for her. So I would say a little bit more about this tradition. First we're going to do the chant, uh, our version, and then Nando is going to do the traditional version. Canto da Maronna di Montevergine. Prima noi e poi dopo in Va bene, Nando. Che della Maronna, 
e viva Guparla! Peter De Geronimo e Francesca Silvano e ci manca Nando che balla so, Nando, before we show the video vuoi dire qualcosa sulla danza? io voglio dire qualcosa sulla Dea Cibele e la tradizione dei femminelli vuoi dire qualcosa sulla danza? la danza è, è un'espressione che entra nel rito e da, pensate che gli antichi eh, coloni greci salivano eh, dal, sotto il monte Partenio fino a sopra la punta per andare a danzare in onore della dea Cibele, la Magna Mater, che poi è diventata la mamma schiavona e Monte Vergine. Ogni regione, ogni zona ha una propria danza, anche se il, il ritmo è sempre lo stesso, la tecnica cambia, la lingua cambia, il dialetto cambia di paese in paese e quindi il gesto, il movimento, cambia anche se di poco e si caratterizza a seconda dell'area. Quest'area che abbiamo visto è l'area vesuviana, la parte più alta, del, quasi dell'altezza di somma vesuviana. Antichissima, molto arcaica, e si danza per ore, ore e ore e si sta meglio dopo. È vero. So, in a few words, Warren, before we show the video, this dance is very ah. erotic too, it's very much about making love. It's, some of the gestures are also about sending away, clean, cleaning the air, sending away spirits, but it's mainly a love-making dance done by a couple playing castanets. It goes back to the ancient fertility rites for the goddess Cibele, the Magna Mater, the goddess of the earth many times represented yeah. black and many times with a frame drum. So the beauty of our tradition, and you can see that in Pompeii or the Na in Naples at the museum, you still see in mosaics people doing the tamoriata. So a couple of thousands years back, they were doing the same dance, the same rhythm that we're doing today. That's only in Magna Grecia, the south of Italy. In the rest of the world, this tradition, pre-Christian and so pagan, it's gone. We kept it, so uh, that's really the special thing about this area, and that's why I take people to experience it, because most people outside of Italy don't know this exists, and don't hear these, ar these archaic melodies or see this erotic dance done in front of a church in the country where we have the Vatican. This still happens. Yeah. So we're going to show it to you if you don't believe us, right? You were there with me. They still do it, and what, you don't want to translate what they sing, but some, the Neapolitans get it. <laughs> So, um, again, it's a beautiful tradition. It's also important to know that Mamma Schiavona is the patron of gays and transgenders, and it goes back to ancient times when men became women to honor the goddess, the priests became priestesses, called Galli. That's another beauty of this tradition that's never gone. In Naples, they're called Femminielli. They're kind of sacred. Their biggest devotion is going there on February 2nd, but they were there also now. In September, one of my friends, student, actor, dancer, is here, Summer. And do you mind to say hello to everyone? From here. <laughs> yes, say hello, because... Uh, <laughs> Summer belongs to that tradition, right? I can say that, oh, the Femminielli. And he's making shows and films about it. So now we're going to show the video, and one of them that I met this summer as a special voice, his name is Biagino. So let's show the video.
contadini scendevano dal mon dai monti con le varie armi che avevano, o furcone, a forno, o rastriere, o platone, e insieme facevano un ritmo forte che è questo qua. The Turks or the Saracini, we call them here, they had an army of a thousand drums. Spostatevi, spostatevi. No, ma la mantenete, la mantenete. Adesso il popolo, il popolo mi ha chiesto. Quando dormite avete biscato, tutte ma non è mamma, noi
wow, it's very emotional for me. Uh, forse se vuoi rimettere Nando, prima che, se ne, che, che lo salutiamo. Um, very emotional for me to relieve this moment. And um, <laughs> is it emotional for you too? Yeah? Um, so it's hard to speak after I watch what we did, but thank you, Nando, for also introducing me to people that I didn't know, like Viaggino, the singer in Montevergine, and that first Tamuriada you saw in that cave, that's a tavern that is over a thousand years old, no, a Tramonti, Isidoro, yeah. antichissimo. So t Nando me? lives there and he's always with these people, so tu li conosci da tanto tempo. The, the original of the, the house is from 1300. Oh, thir from the 1300s. And he was explaining that rhythm, la bocata, is a war rhythm. They used to warn the Saracens, who also had a thousand drums, with that groove. La puoi, non la puoi suonare è troppo tardi, la bocata? Falla solo vedere. Hey. Normally it's uh, two, three days, uh, uh, the tamuriata. So it's a very the... strong rhythm, very powerful. E lo fanno sempre ogni anno a giugno, giusto? Andando sulle montagne. E ogni anno il lunedì di Pentecoste. So the Monday of Pentecost, in unison, hundreds and hundreds of people play that rhythm la, for la Madonna. La festa è il lunedì, ma si comincia il giovedì. È meglio anticiparsi. So it's five days and there's a... Yeah. It's, a lot of walking up the mountain, it's really beautiful. A lot of food that day, we also had a lot of food and wine. Sì, sì. Very special. E... The wine there is very, very special. So you don't see that in the video, but everywhere we went, there was always food and wine. So, <laughs> molto speciale. So, I want to, do I want to say something else? Yeah. Del, visto che... it's, very, it's very special because it's uh, the only feast when, uh, in, from the seven, that you have to go, to go only by feet up from down the sea up of the mountain for three hours walking. And uh, all the day, all the night, there are people from children's, old people and adults coming everywhere, from everywhere. Incredible, it's, it's yes. an incredible feast, and it's the only uh, rhythm that you can play uh, with many different tambourines. Because the tamburiata normally it's only one tambour, also one drum, frame drum. The, the tamburiata that we do in uh, avocata, it's the only one for, with much different uh, tambourines. In unison. Una grande orchestra di tamburi. Mm. Che bello. Yeah. Perché serviva a spaventare i turchi. <laughs> it was used to scare the Turks that came over in, during invasion. I know it's not politically correct to say that, but it's history. So that's what happened. They did meet through drumming. But that's true of many cultures. They use drums all the time when they go to war. But this is for the Madonna. So io passo es alla Madonna Brunettella. C'è qualche altra cosa che vuoi dire? O posso continuare? No, va bene così. <laughs> So we're now going to speak and do some music. Uh, first, before we go into the Madonna Brunetella, which is the last one we close with, we're going to play a piece that John La Barbera composed. When we decided to do this research, especially I was led by a vision of the Madonna back in 1986 and 87. We did an opera called The Voyage of the Black Madonna, and John composed a lot of the music for the goddesses. So the spirit of this... Um, Music is not just to do the traditional for us in New York, but to do also our own music inspired by the tradition. And in this case, it's dedicated to the goddesses, the pre-Christian tradition. This is called Canto di Cibele, which is the goddess of the earth. And it was the end of our opera. 
where we went back to understanding that it was dedicated to Mother Earth and understanding the Earth is a living being and we have to respect her as such as our planet is truly endangered. So we did this opera back in 1990 and now it's climate change is here with us. So in honor of the Earth Mother, Canto di Cibele. by John La Barbera. <laughs> and then another of your composition, these songs always bring tears to my eyes for many reasons, because my ex-husband was part of composing, not composing, writing lyrics with us, and he passed away, and he was devoted to this Madonna, La Madonna della Libera, Our Lady of Freedom, also known as Brunettella. So this song, was composed for the opera. It talks about uh, this Madonna that you saw before, the last one, very powerful. As you see, that very big black statue. And when I started the research, I found out then that she really resembles the goddess Isis as that area, Irpinia, province of Benevento, and also Avellino, was a settlement of the Egyptians. So after this song, we have a surprise. Uh, Dr. Armando May will tell you more about the Egyptians in Naples and Campania. This is a prayer we're gonna do that he, John composed, asking her uh, for miracles, especially the miracle of the star. That Madonna, to me, always changes expression. And you see the magic of what Isis must have been because she was the goddess of magic as well. And the star, for my experience, the first time I went, the center star started moving towards me and my ex-husband. And that was not an effect of a movie. That was real happening in front of our eyes. So we knew that she was very miraculous, and we wrote this song for her. John wrote the song. <laughs> I wrote the words. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dame esta gracia, Madonna Brunetella. Dame esta gracia, dame la pecarita. Maronna Brune Tella Quando c'è visto Lo vise tu io nire Quando c'è visto Lo vise tu io bello Ma c'è capito L'amore tu So it's a real honor and it's a big surprise that Dr. Armando May, Egyptologist, archaeologist, writer from Torre Annunziata, where we go, Naples, where we go to Madonna della Neve, is happening to be here today because he's going around the United States because the Gaia network kind of stole him from Naples and he's going through different universities. He's very, very unique in his research and he's giving us great, great talks during the tour about ISIS in Pompeii, so right by the Temple of Isis. So now he's going to tell you some more and things that I never knew before until I met him. Prego. Thank you, Alessandra. And thank you, of course, to Casa Italiana NYU for inviting me at this event. And of course, bear with me for my English, that is not my first language. So I, I hope in your support. And I'm very happy to be here it's an unexpected event. <laughs> Very, but it seems normal. <laughs> yes. E la Madonna nera easy che fanno loro. Their connection. Sì. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I feel at home because of the, your uh, lyrics and songs and explanation by from Italy. It's a very very magic moment for me. Uh, just a few words. I'm in, I'm historian and archaeologist, Egyptologist, involved in the study of ancient Egypt since the mid of the 90s. More than 25 years uh, in the study of that civilization, a civilization, and um, I'm studying its history, uh, theology, uh, mythology, legend, life and customs, and particularly its connection with the main culture of South Europe, particularly Greece and Italy, and particularly with South Italy. Um, you have to know that uh, particularly in South Italy, for example, in Pompeii, one of the largest city ever unearthed in Italy, and I have to say all around the world, that was destroyed by the Vesuvia eruption during the 79th current era. Uh, we found many uh, clues suggesting a uh, connection between the uh, Roman Empire and, and uh, uh, the Egyptian uh, culture. Uh, in fact, in Pompeii was discovered one of the biggest temples dedicated to Isis, the goddess Isis. And also in many domus, the house of the Pompeii, Pompeian aristocracy, uh, in frescoes, that was found in those villas, in those domus, Egyptologists discovered connection between 
the Roman Empire and ancient Egypt, particularly, for example, in Villa dei Misteri, one of the most greatest villa ever unearthed in Pompeii. There are many connections between Pompeii and the gods of Egypt, particularly Isis, Osiris, Horus, and Set. Uh, it is very interesting to highlight uh, also that in um, uh, outside Porta Nocera, one of the entrance to the ancient city, uh, was discovered a unique tomb for its features. Uh, it's a tomb having a column and at the top an egg. The egg is a clear symbolism that is connected to the goddess Isis because it's, it means uh, fertility, growth, and rebirth. Um, after the fall of the Roman Empire, uh, the cult of Isis was preserved by the priests of that in that period, and a long time turned in the cult of the Black Madonna. There are many uh, books on that matter that you can read uh, to improve your knowledge on that matter. And um, the cult, the, you have to know that in Europe there are. Uh, almost 120 uh, different Madonna Nera. Each of them have a, a specific function uh, to protect from evil, healing, and so on. And it's the same in the Egyptian culture for the goddess Isis that was um, characterized by many functions, for example, as goddess of the afterlife or um, uh, goddess of healing or in the function of uh, justice, in function of uh, Mahat, the goddess of justice. Along the time, so along the Middle Age, Renaissance, until the Enlightenment, Italian Enlightenment, the uh, cult of Isis was preserved. Um, and you have to know that not far away from Naples, in a villa that was built during the 18th century, I discovered some bas reliefs that refers to the um, ancient Egypt and particularly to the cult of Isis in Villa Parnaso. And uh, I'm still studying that villa and the bas reliefs, and I, am fa um, I, I found very interesting connection with the, uh, the Egyptian culture. Uh, also, uh, during the 19th century, at the beginning of the 20th century, so the last century, uh, the cult of Isis was still preserved. And you have to know that in, in the cemetery, monumental cemetery of Naples, for example, uh, at the beginning of the last centuries, uh, nobles and people belonged to the uh, Napolitan aristocracy were buried in tombs having pyramid shapes or temples dedicated to the goddess Isis. So the, the ancient Egypt is still preserved uh, nowadays through the school, esoteric schools of philosophers and so on. And, um, and it means that the ancient culture is still alive in our time. Uh, I believe that my time is expired. <laughs> But I uh, would like to suggest you to improve your studies in that matter because it is the better way to better understand the origins of the South Italy traditions that are performed by uh, dance, uh, songs, and uh, music. Thank you so much for listening. They use a lot of instruments. Yes, right. a lot yeah. of instruments, uh, also tambourine. Tambourine, the sistrum. Yes, yeah. that originated from fertile crescents because we have clues of tambourine also in the Sumerians. In the Sumerians, Sumerians. right. Yes. There is a lot to say about this. Uh, there is a, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Part of it is in my book. He wrote an essay in my book, Healing Journeys with the Black Madonna, which I will have upstairs, but of course, since you're here, I, I, I ask you to say a few words. Grazie. Grazie a te. Thank you so much. Maybe at the end, people can ask more questions. So th that's why people may be asking, what is a black Madonna if you're not familiar with it? She's many things. She's the womb of the earth, the womb of women. She represents the dark side of the moon. But the main thing, remember, is really the earth mother and the goddesses that she comes from. So, and all of the different goddesses, Cibele, Hecate, Aphrodite, when you saw the sea, the black Madonnas in the sea, it's continuation of the rites of Venus and Aphrodite. But all of them are embodied by the main one, which is Isis, 
which was the first black Madonna and child and the first Trinity, Isis, Osiris, and Horus, as he said. So we're gonna, do, before we do the last piece, I wanna ask you to sing with us. So you've been watching us sing and play, but I'm sure there is a, a prayer that you can do with us from La Madonna della Libera di Moyano that you heard a little before. Are you ready to chant with us before we close? So one is called Madonna della Libera. I'll do the first part of the words and you can repeat after me. Um, and then the other one is a Viva Maria. So if you understand Italian, it's easy. Madonna della Libera, Regina dell'anima mia. And everyone says, Regina dell'anima mia. Quanto è bella chiamare Maria, Madonna della libera, regina dell'anima mia, regina dell'anima mia, quanto è bella chiamare Maria. Nando, ci sei ancora? Puoi cantare? <ride> Madonna della libera vai, regina dell'anima mia. Puoi dare la voce a Nando? Regina, regina dell'anima dell mia, mia, quanto è bella chiamare Maria. Maria. Buonanotte! <ride> Acqu Camarone da compagna. Bravo Nando! And the last one, Evviva Maria, Maria, Evviva, Evviva Maria, Maria, Evviva, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Evviva Maria, Maria, Evviva, Evviva Maria. Thank you for singing. Thank you, Simus. So we like to close. I think if we have time, it's up to Stefan and Kostya. We may uh, have time for some questions and answers because there is so much to say about this subject, this trip to Italy, the Black Madonnas, the, and, and the healing. The healing part is super important, and it's still happening. It's again not uh, something of the past. It, these miracles and this healing happens every day in these lo sacred locations. So this, this chant that we're gonna close with is the prayer that actually is in Latin. It comes from the Black Madonna of Montserrat, Spain, who's a sister of our Madonnas, especially one of the Madonnas in Calabria, La Madonna dei Poveri. And it's from the Livre Vermeil, that's the collection. If people like early music, you may know this. It's called Cuntissimus Concanentes. And this one was done a lot in the Middle Ages also to send away fear of death by the plague, and it was done against the plague. So again, it's a subject I have been talking about a lot before COVID, and I firmly believe like in those times, they process with the saints, the Madonnas, and they dance in circle and spinning and drum to protect themselves from disease and to send away fear. So we like to end with this healing message with the prayer Cunitissimus Concanentes.
and we will stay for a couple of questions just to speak and thank everyone, especially grateful to Kostya, Hovic, Stefan Albertini, Eleonora for the video. So the prayer also especially for you for always being there for us. Francesca Silvano, Peter De Geronimo, Steve Gorn, John La Barbera. Grazie. I also forgot to say that you will see that Steve is playing Indian flutes, and a friend of mine here is from Bangladesh, and I always talk about that. Connection. Isn't there a connection between India and Southern Italy? Yeah, that scale. That scale. scale. Do you want to say a little more so people know what we're mixing? But it's not really. It's it's, it's original. Uh, it's, it's uh, you hear a lot of uh, 
I learned that from you, but that's the beauty of this music. And Johnny, do you want to say anything about the music that we've been <laughs> after all these years? <laughs> we we teach music online, but <laughs> you said it all. For itself, I think you had a good sense of you know the Neapolitan sound, the archaic sound of, the, of music that was not really um, known or became popularized up until around the nineteen seventies. Uh, didn't really reach here until much later, but a lot of the immigrants when they came here, they, you know, they they knew this music and they, that's where they came from, but you know it was not presented uh, that period of time. Mm -hmm. so. so we are the first group that did the revival here in the United States. Now it's it, it's more famous. The Pizzicata Moriata in Italy. There's more of a trend. Here's a friend of mine, Marcello Santo, who has a great restaurant downtown. Bella Ciao. I love the name. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do a fundraiser there. C can I say that, Marcel? Yeah, that in first of uh, probably in December. And thanks to him, we're going to honor a great actor that I really, really like him a lot, Armand Assante. If all goes well, so stay in touch with us. Um, I have books upstairs with a lot of the material of the Black Madonna. It's 435 pages, so I'll come up there. But if anyone has any questions, uh, we're here for you. But. First, a big thank to Costia. Stefano, please. Grazie. Armando Me. Grazie. Uh, grazie for believing in us. And this is our premiere of this program. And it was inspired by conversations we had over the phone. So anyone wants to ask anything to us before we... All right, I'll see you up. Yes? Uh, get him. Yes. Hi. Um, thank you for this. This is wonderful. Um, my people come from Puglia. Siamo Pugliesi. And we have the, tarante the Tarantella, we have the Pizzica. Si, si. And I'm wondering if there's a connection with sure. this what, and what, what that connection Yeah, we normally play that all the time. <laughs> That's the old, this is the first night we haven't played the Pizzica here. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. But you have, that, you know, you're talking. We've been playing it for a long time, and you know, here is the short demonstration of a rhythm. So there is, we could go on forever doing the pizza. That's a whole other show. And do you have Unless you want to hear one, we could play one. What, can I have a question? Want to hear one short pizza? Yeah. But the, to answer you, yes, of course, all this is connected. Absolutely. Do you have, have you recorded this music? Oh That's my, my God, we have seven CDs out. We're all over the internet. Oh, good. Yes. Okay, and good. we have Thank a whole you. album called Tarantelle Canti d'Amore, Tarantada, and the pizza is in everything we do. Um, because it's so important, it's the origin of the ancient dance from pre-Christian times, and Dionysus and Goddess Chibere, to heal especially women, and then it became known as the myth of the Tarantula, the, but it's a myth. So there is an, it's an important part of my work. I do healing workshops using that dance. And there are connections of the Black Madonna with that as well because the goddess Shibele was connected to the Black Madonna. So Puglia is always in our repertoire. This is the first now we haven't played a beat again. <laughs> Somebody brought it up. Thank you, thank you. We could play a short one if you want. You got it on mandolin? Which one? We know lots of pizza, guys. We just have to decide which one. Quella? And then you, yeah, you can switch to the guitar. Ah, ti prego, Santo Paolo, la guerriera. Ah, ti prego, Santo Paolo, la guerriera. Che la de pizzicata, we che la de pizzicata, we che la de pizzicata. Tarantella, a tarantella, a tarantella. E la de pizzicata, a tarantella, tarantella, e la, e la.
Adoro pizzicao, adoro tella, adoro pizzicao, adoro tella, so sta la poderia, we so sta la poderia, we so sta la poderia, e la unella, e la unella, e la unella, so sta la poderia di la unella, la unella, e la unella. Are you gonna switch the guitar? Are you gonna play the guitar? Do you play? Thank you. 